My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This question has to be one of the most honest laments that has ever been prayed, asked, sung, spoken, or cried. Tonight, we gather with this lament on our lips. Tonight, we come to face the starkness of the cross. As we gather, our laments become our prayers. What do we pray when we have no words? What do we sing when we have no melody? What do we dance when there is no rhythm to be found? Where do we go when we have no direction? What do we confess when we find it hard to believe? What do we release when we are out of tears and no longer can cry those tears? What are we to do, God? On this night, as we break bread, and as we approach the cross, we struggle along with Jesus to understand and to know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Tonight, we pray that God would speak from the silence. We trust in the shadows and the unknown and the wordless, danceless, directionless times that God is near. Even when darkness covers us and the light becomes as night, the darkness is not dark to God. The night is bright as day, for darkness is light to you, God. Amen. Take me back to the garden Lead me back to the moment I heard your voice Take me back to communion Lead me back to the moment I saw your face It was all so simple It was easy to love space between us it was easy to trust you are closer closer than my skin you are in the air I'm breathing in here's where
table is a place for each of us. This table has room for all of us. This table is a place where we can come just as we are and know that we are welcomed and we are loved. So come to this table and remember that night when Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room sharing a meal. And as they ate, he took bread and he lifted it up and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he broke it. And he passed it among those seated with him saying, this is my body the bread of life which is broken for you, eat of this, each of you, and remember me. And in a similar manner, he took the cup and pouring it out said, this is the cup of the new covenant, the cup of salvation poured out for all people, drink of this, each of you, and remember me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of ordinary items, light, shadows, bread, cup. As we gather around this table, wherever we find ourselves this evening, may you bless these ordinary symbols and tangible reminders of your love that in the shadow of the cross, there was abundance. In the shadow of the cross, there was love. In the shadow of the cross, there was welcome. Bless this time, bless the breaking of bread, and bless the sharing of the cup. In the mystery of this evening and your name we pray, amen.
Would you join me in prayer? Send forth your Holy Spirit now, God. Be with us as we follow with Jesus and the steps that he will take tonight to Calvary. May we hear your voice speak among all the silence, the sorrow and the pain of the cross. Keep us all one, even as you prayed that we would be one. Fill us with the strength to abide with you in you. Fill us with the strength to stay awake. Fill us with the strength to minister unto you, even in the torturous chaos of a crucifying world. We ask this in Christ, through Christ, and with Christ. Amen. The practice of creating Stations of the Cross for meditative reflection on the final hours of Jesus' life is a very old one. Each stop marks a point along the way to Jesus' death. Some of the stations are recorded in scriptures, but others, such as Jesus Falling, are legends that developed much later in the Christian tradition. Tonight, we will experience the Stations of the Cross through images. You are invited to allow the music and images to guide your steps with Jesus tonight. The Stations are interpreted in ways that connect each Station with the universal human experiences of lament, struggle, and suffering alongside themes of grace and mercy. Each station challenges us with choices. They remind us that we can always take a different path, choosing life over death. The stations confront us with the very worst of human nature. In each station, we are faced with the darkness that can be found within. Tonight, we walk Jesus' steps together and we face the darkness of a violent world. We also trust we do not go alone. We are traveling with the beloved community and with God, for even the dark is not dark to God. With a gentle kiss, Jesus was identified and captured at night, taken away by soldiers, stripped of his clothing, interrogated, tortured, crowned with a crown of thorns, and handed over to Pontius Pilate, who would condemn him to death on a cross.
Jesus is condemned as an enemy of the state. He is condemned unjustly by those who were threatened by what he taught, said, and did. They were afraid that he might turn their world upside down by making a difference in people's lives, by giving them hope in the face of oppression. Even today, we condemn people unjustly. We point fingers and judge those who don't conform to our way of thinking. We condemn because of skin color, gender, sexuality, disability, belief, the list is long. We point and we blame others without ever examining who we too have hurt and harmed with our own judgment and or our own privilege. We are quick to point fingers and slow to offer forgiveness. Can we see and respond with grace? Can we truly forgive? Or do we continue to condemn over and over again? We pray that God might give us the grace to see, respect, and love all people, both innocent and guilty. Change our hearts, God, that we may see with new eyes those we might otherwise condemn. Jesus starts out carrying the cross by himself to Golgotha. The cross was his to bear. The cross wasn't just a piece of wood. It was a symbol for all the crosses that Jesus had faced as a teacher, as a prophet, and as a refugee. From the moment of his birth, when his family fled to foreign lands to escape death, to the threats from those in power, to the lack of understanding from those closest to him, Jesus carried the burden of the cross in a courageous way. Just as D Jesus did with the burdens in his life, he transforms the cross from a symbol of condemnation to a symbol of liberation. Help us to walk Jesus' steps. burdens that we all carry. Some are obvious and others we keep hidden away. There are burdens of illness, pain and disability, of aging, of dependence, and caring for someone who no longer knows who we are. There are burdens of fear, of anxiety, of loneliness, and of isolation. Sometimes the burdens threaten to completely weigh us down. We pray that we might feel God's presence as we face the burdens that we carry. Give us the courage and strength to share our burdens more freely. Help us not to be afraid, to acknowledge our fears and our pains. Help us to open our hearts and eyes to the crosses that others bear and challenge us to help to alleviate one another's burdens. Jesus falls. Burdened under the weight of the cross, Jesus stumbles. 
abandoned by his friends, Jesus feels the full weight of the cross he bears, and it brings him to his knees. Help us to walk. Jesus steps. slouched in a doorway over a warm vent, seeking rest from the heavy burden he carried. He doesn't look much like God there, but he didn't look like God when he fell in the dirt on the way to Calvary either. The crowd saw a man condemned to death by the authorities. Like the crowd, we often have only condemnation and rejection for those who fail to meet our expectations. We judge them without knowing their burdens, their trials, their struggles. Do we ever suspect the part we might have played in bringing them to their knees? We are surrounded by people overburdened by the crosses they carry. They struggle and sometimes fall. Many suffer because of failures in our own financial, health, and political systems. What do we do to help them? We pray that we might see Jesus in the child hungry for bread, and the man sleeping on the street corner with an empty can in front of him and a sign that simply says, please. Place in us a compassionate heart like that of Jesus. When our own crosses weigh us down, give us courage to get up and continue the journey. Give us the strength to keep going when hope is dim. When Jesus and his mother meet, they look at each other. Words fail to express what they are feeling. We can only imagine what he saw in his mother's eyes, and what she saw in his eyes. Their eyes must have been clouded by tears, shining with love, full of pain and hurt for one another. This is raw. This is painful. This is lament. Help us to walk Jesus' steps.
Jesus carries the heavy burden of the loss of his family. This was not of his making. The violence he experienced was etched onto his mother's heart as she watched his agony. We see Mary's pain in mothers and fathers who have experienced the death of a child or lives lost to senseless acts of violence in homes that suffer from violence and abuse. We see Jesus' pain in the child watching their parents struggle with unimaginable suffering from their own addictions, losses, and pains. We see Jesus and his mother's pain as we continue to lose family and friends to COVID-19. We pray that we might remember the gaze that rested between Jesus and his mother. In the middle of pain, there was a deep love. Give us the courage to bring that love into our homes, into our relationships, into the places of fracture and disharmony in our community and our world. Simon the Cyrene was a stranger, but that did not matter. What matters is that in Jesus' moment of need, Simon was capable of lending his strength to one who had nothing left, of taking the cross upon himself, which Jesus could no longer carry. Help us to walk in Jesus' steps. Look at Jesus, who lies hidden and unknown under the crosses of today, beneath every person in need. Across our world, we see the face of struggle and suffering and the faces of children crying out at the border and the faces of those dealing with poverty, people we know of and people we do not know must live with the aftermath of the ravages and destruction, destructive forces of nature, coping with hurricanes, droughts, fires, and the many devastating effects of climate change. Tonight we pray that our eyes might be open to the opportunities to be a Simon in our world, and those times when we can help, let us have the generosity to do so. May we continue in the spirit of Simon through our support of agencies such as local food banks and Week of Compassion, who work to alleviate suffering in our communities and around the world. May we also have the humility to accept the Simons along our road, who reach out to help us in our moments of need. The women of Jerusalem wept when they saw Jesus' suffering. Jesus recognized their distress and speaks for the first time. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Help us to walk Jesus' steps.
look. Look at Jesus and hear his message for us today. Weep for the children. Weep for the children who are abused. Weep for the children who are food insecure. Weep for the children who are victims of violence. Weep for the women. Weep for the women who are abused. Weep for the women who have to lay their children in the grave. Weep for men, women, and children who suffer from the constant fear of not being good enough. Weep for those who struggle, struggle under societal expectations of body image that prevents them from feeling beautiful. Weep for the young and for the old who cannot find a job or a way in life. Weep for the young and the old who are forgotten. Weep for the people who starve in the shadow of abundance. Weep for the victims of gun violence. Weep for those at risk, particularly for those who live with racism as a daily source of anxiety and anguish. Reap for the homeless, the refugee, those who find themselves in exile. Weep for the world that has lived in exile during a global pandemic. Weep for them. We pray that our hearts would be opened up to the suffering of all people in our world. Give us a spirit that would recognize their pain, the courage to challenge the systems that place terrible burdens on them, and the compassion to support them. After being stripped of his clothing in an attempt to rob him of his dignity before the crowd, Jesus is hung on the cross. Nails pierce his wrists and ankles, the hands that once wiped away blindness, the hands that touched the children's heads, offering a blessing, the hands that broke bread and fed the hungry, the hands that cured the leper. The carpenter's hands are joined to the wood again. As the cross is lifted up, we can't help but hear the echo of Jesus' words. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Help us to walk Jesus' steps. We see the violence of the cross still carried out today, every time someone is sentenced to death. Jesus is crucified when another child dies of hunger. Jesus is crucified in, in all who are killed, harmed, or displaced because of war and violence. Jesus is crucified in all who are marginalized and oppressed in our society because of their gender, race, and sexuality. He is crucified in those who are trafficked across the world. He is crucified in the exploitation of the earth and its resources. We pray for those who have been hurt by this fragmented world. May they know that they are not alone, that dark is not dark to God. We pray that we might find our voice to speak out 
against the brokenness. As the life of Jesus ebbs away, we are left with his final words. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the midst of his suffering, Jesus forgives. As Jesus' life flows away, he offers a prayer of forgiveness for those who hurt him the most. Help us to walk Jesus' steps. There is so much to seek forgiveness for in our world. Hunger, poverty, violence, abuse, war, neglect, corruption, greed, racism. The list is long. We each have been hurt by someone, and in turn, we have also hurt someone. As we face the cross, we are presented with the challenge of forgiveness. How do we love our enemies? How do we let go of hurt? How do we ask for forgiveness? How do we accept forgiveness? How do we ask God to forgive on our behalf when we can't find it in our own hearts to forgive? Do we dare pray for the courage to forgive as Jesus forgives? We ask for forgiveness when we can no longer bear it as we witness Jesus draw his last breath. Jesus is taken off the cross and laid in the dark earth of the world, in a darkened tomb. All those who loved him felt emptied and exhausted. There seemed no longer any sense of purpose in anything. Here in the darkness they closed the tomb and parted. Help us to walk Jesus' steps.
there are times when we are overcome by lament, by darkness, by the deaths we experience. We pray for the strength to accept the partings that come in life. May the finality of death not oppress us. May the silence of death not overcome us. Be with our laments. Remind us that even when we come to an end, you are with us.